welcome to the Totally Awesome Workshop, where I'm going to be telling you how to make some picket fencing for your garden. Handy stuff. Now, you can go and buy it down at a garden centre. You can even go to a builder's merchants and, yes, buy bucket loads of wood up, very expensive wood, and nails, fixtures, fittings, and you can make it all yourself. Of course you can. Possibly some of you have already done that. I've done it, and I don't like parting with those greenbacks, I'm afraid. This is the cheapest way I've found to make picket fencing, and it lasts, on average, I would guess, about four years. I've got some tips for you, and you know what it is really, what it's made out of? It's made out of this. These. What a load of old pallets. If you'll pardon my French. But I'll tell you what, they do the job, and cheap as chips, they cost me nothing. Now you can pick up pallets of all descriptions, all makes, all sizes, all different shapes and you know where you get best best pallets really they come from literally if you go around you see them in people's waste skips or if you go to an industrial estate i actually do go to industrial estates and just ask them because most of the time if they're not spray marked generally with a color like blue which is a refundable they get a deposit on those if they're not spray marked and you ask them they basically have to pay to have them taken away so you can pick them all up for nothing Okay, so you take the rough with the smooth, all different sizes and shapes, but let me tell you, these are the ones you want. You use all these struts as well if you want, dismantle some of this, but as for making these, oh my god, I found a way, it's so easy. I think it should be licensed. I think they should call me 008, licensed to thrill, or be and do it yourself, maybe it should be licensed to drill. Anyway. Let's move on and I'll show you the equipment you need. Okay, as for the tools, pretty much simplicity itself. Now you can use a handsaw, of course you can use a handsaw. At my age, I don't think so. I'm using a reciprocating saw, which is one of those saws with a long blade, as you can see there. And I buy spare blades, and when they're worn down, you can see they get shiny, and they're extremely sharp when they come out of the packet. Now, you can buy these from regular retail outlets or you can save yourself about 50% of the cost by shopping online and seeing, getting the code off of those and basically saving yourself a lot. So, reciprocating saw and a rough saw cut on the blade there. You see it's a rough saw cut, that one. Okie doke, one of those saws, I set it on just medium speed, that's all you need. Fairly soft wood pallets. Definitely get yourself a pair of ear defenders, a decent pair of ear defenders. I don't know what these are called, pelt or felter. I said get yourself a pair of ear defenders. Oh, sorry, sorry. I've been doing so many power tools, I'm going a bit deaf anyway. But those I can recommend. And then a wrecking bar here. You want one of those? Definitely for leverage. A claw hammer, just a regular claw hammer. A screwdriver, narrower than the width of one of the staples that they staple gun these pallets together with. A marker pen. A tape measure, some four inch nails, preferably some of the more astute of you will have noticed they are second hand four inch nails. Yes, I even save nails. Why should I spend any money when I'm going to make this picket fence in for next to nothing? For the health and safety buffs, a breathing mask. I cannot wear them because I have glasses. If I put this over my little nose, it steams up my glasses and I'll probably saw my leg off. Also, a pair of safety goggles should be worn. I cannot wear those because they steam up and not only that, they're not prescription. I can't see anything with them, therefore I might saw my leg off. But for health and safety, please, glasses, breathing apparatus here, and if you want a pair of gloves, should there be any accidents, for health and safety reasons of course, I personally do not use it. I cannot hold a saw blade that's in a plastic mounting and have it slippering and sliding, I don't like them. But if you want to wear them, you should really wear those three. So that's health and safety cover. This is how basic it is. Now first, on the pallets, you've got to break them down. Now you think, God, that's quite a lot of work, you know, stripping them all down. Now you can, of course, strip them right down, right to nothing, lay them flat, measure them with the vertical panels and start all over again. But my secret way of doing this, don't tell anybody about this, minimum of saw cuts, and I can do picket fencing so fast, it's like slicing bread. Come and have a look. Now I'll show you two types of pallets because they're obviously held together 
when they're manufactured with a nail gun. Boom, drives it right in. They use a long nail and they use a staple. This is what they look like. Now then, the nail gun obviously punches it in so the head is actually sunk in the wood. So you cannot really dig these out to take them out. They're pretty difficult. You need to put your crowbar under there with a claw hammer, hammer away. Some you get loose, some you will split right down the nail head. The other ones, on the other hand, over here, we have the staple gun. Now the staple gun ones are much easier should you want to take one off. Now you won't need to do much with these. You won't, really won't need to do much. There's the, there's the staples here, as you can see, just there. Now they're quite long. Let's see if I can get one. I'm not going to pull this one out of my fingers. Here's one I prepared earlier. So you can see there, if you can see that, that staple is one about two inches long. But the benefit is I can get a screwdriver underneath there, hammer it out because I want to use one slat of this to make and create my template. I'll show you how I do it. So what I'm going to do is, this is why I wanted this narrow screwdriver that's just narrower than the staple. I can drive this underneath, tap underneath, and I can lever all these staples out. Ooh. Ooh. Out they come with that screwdriver and thereby not splitting the wood. If I just put a crowbar on this, I'm going to have some real trouble. So those can all come out, as you can see. If you want to increase leverage, just, just use your the hammer head as a lever and you can increase the leverage, pop them all out. It's a little tip there to stop people straining. Just change the angle of leverage and they will all pop out. Like this one, this one's done. And then at the other end, you do this all the way along, I'll just show you using the wrecking bar. Now if you do want to get these off, use the curved end, the short narrow end of the wrecking bar and you can drive it down with the hammer and then pull upwards, levering it off and look, you don't split the wood. It comes off and the wood's not split. So this is going to make my template and this is really almost the most important part to do. So simple, you're going to fall out of your armchair when you see it. Right, I've got my single panel off. Glasses on so we can see what time of day it is. Tape measure. Now I find the height that I want most picket fencing, and I'm using this for screening around compost heaps, along the edges of, uh, say, stinging nettles, rough ground. Anyone want to screen off and make look a little bit uh, more picturesque? I find 32 inches to the top of the point where the picket is. So I go in the middle of this. I mark off 32 inches just with the dot. I use a pretty thick pen here just. Bad eyesight, I know you could say that, couldn't you? It's that, coupled with the fact I want to see it on the film. And then I come down to 30 inches, so I mark 30 inches either side to make my triangle. So it's 32 at the peak, there's the triangle that's going to be the top, there's 32 from the base to the top, and just drop it down two inches and mark both outside edges at 32. And then all you do is use a screwdriver, use a ruler really, use a ruler, but I'm going to use a screwdriver just to show you this. I measure across there, I measure across there, now that, if you can see it, which is why I made it in blue, so you can see it there, that is my triangle. You can have that, you can have it a lot steeper, you can have it a little stubby triangle, if you, you make it what you want, but I put 32 at the top and the two edges at 30, that's standard. Now I'm going to cut that nice and neat, and that's going to be my template for measuring everything else off. It's so easy, it's so easy, wait till you see it. I can't even believe it myself. Take your palette. Oh, these are the ones I personally like. Is they got the standard slats here, but they're close together. There's barely, if I put one up, there's about an inch gap. I suppose that's how they make it. There's about an inch gap between each of those slats. And to me, for piggy fencing, that looks about right. So I lay it down. I've got double hop-ups here to support it. Some of these pallets are quite heavy. And then all I do, I'm lining them up, get my template, put it right at the bottom of the other one. Now, allow for the thickness of your marker. If you use a big marker pen, just say two millimeters at this end, overlap it, so it allows for the two millimeters of the pen at this end. Get both outside edges parallel, mark it down, Move along. I told you how easy this is going to be. If it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine slats in it, you're only going to make 10, 
20 cuts because you've got the spare here as well. So 20 saw cuts and I'm almost going to have pick your fence in, ready to put into the garden, stain up, paint it, whatever you want to do. Measure twice and cut once. How true it is. How simple this is because by cutting this way I don't have to dismantle the pallet and start all over again. All will become clear in a few moments. Okay, I said okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, we've done that. We're going to turn it right over and what we need to do is should make the cut here, a cut here. I'll turn it right around to make the cut easier for me. That's right, get it supported. Headphones on, where we go. And I'm just going to nip these off. When I'm blown, do you know what? I think that would even make a little border, wouldn't it? And if you stain that up and make a nice border, you can leave it with the blocks and supports on there, or you can chop all these blocks off, as I'll show you later, take those off, and it's a flower border. I should be a millionaire. Now, that's what I've used to use for years for flower bordering. So that's the off cut used as well. And if I just flip this round, Here we have it. OMG. Oh my god, there is some really neat picket fencing. And all that remains for me to do now is remove these blocks here, support blocks, up there, and I'll show you the flat, flat panel that's all ready to be stained up and poled and put together. So I'll whip these bits off, and we're almost there. So there you go, all the blocks and all the other slats uh, have been removed, just leaves the front ones held on by these two panels, a perfect piece of picket fencing for me to hide behind, plus the off cuts of which have also had the rear blocks removed, and as you can see, nice and narrow, what a perfect border for the edge of your flower bed. Bedding plants, herbaceous borders, whatever you want. There's a nice little curb. It's cost nothing. Check them out when they're stained. And one more final tip I'm going to give you about cutting the stakes. Now then, on the subject of stakes, some of those extra strong pallets, if you can get hold of them, have these big strong, sort of almost three by three cross members in them. Now if you take these out and dismantle them and strip all the nails out, you've got a decent stake. But let me just give you the totally awesome tip on cutting a triangle on the stake. If you're going to try and drive that through the ground, great if you've got wet, squishy ground, because it's going to rot anyway, it's not going in. So you've got to cut a point, but don't cut one like this. You know, Don't cut one that's one side. It has to be equidistant, because when you drive that in, into the ground with a sledgehammer, it's going to push it off to one side. So although you've got your spirit level and your panel here, each sledgehammer blow is going to pinch it and move it across and across and across. So that's going to be a pain. Make sure you do it nice and neat, equidistant, both sides, and then when you drive it in with a sledgehammer, it does actually stay on that same plane. You can see it. I know it sounds so stupidly simple, but a nice straight one like that, or one that's going to go canting off to the side and make life really difficult, because you're going to have to pull it out and start all over again. Get a neat cut and make life easy for you. And all you do is nail them in with something like a three or four inch nail, 
run a whole row, you can do 30, 40, 50 yards of them, no problem at all. One last bit, let's check them out and see what they look like when they're stained. Okay, so we've got the stakes done and we've got the picket fencing already here. If you remember, it was just plain, raw, white wood, and I've got some nice chestnut brown traditional English stain on it. And there you go. Stained up, beautiful. It's not a preservative, it's a colouring. And you can do both sides. But one tip is, just make sure you keep it just off the ground, about no more than half an inch or an inch. If it touches the ground, it soaks up the water, it rocks out quicker. If you put it off the ground, it will last longer. My average is about, about four years they last before they start rotting out. Remember, they cost nothing, so you can just go and make some more. And as for the bonus of the offcuts, my flower bed, border surround is all done as well and stained in autumn red or something they call it. And if I put it at the bottom of the frame, you can see that's what it would look like. With me like a yellow daffodil popping over the top. So there you go, it costs absolutely nothing. One pallet has given me almost a metre of fence panelling for picket fencing and the bonus of border. I'm not done yet because I've got, I got a lot of off cuts of wood, haven't I? Hmm. Now, what can I do with those? So doing all this hacking and sawing actually leaves me with rather a large residual amount of these. That's right. A huge amount of excess timber. And surely here at Totally Awesome, we can't find yet another use for the offcuts. I think we can. Follow me. And the small bits are processed into kindling wood. Lots and lots of kindling wood. That's three things. That's picket fencing, that's garden borders, that's kindling wood. I'm still on the same pallets. I surely can't do anything like that. Mind you, I may have one of these that come in very handy for using those. And this is, yes, a log burner. And there's nothing. But my old log burner loves more. There's a nice seasoned pallet wood that's bone dry. It burns well. And do you know what? I've now got four things from one pallet. If there's only one thing to say after this, all that work I've done. And that's cheers. Happy fence making and keep watching. Totally awesome filming with some more budget tips. Thank mm -hmm. you.